Let's put together an almost brand new, simple, affordable, compact in-ear rig. If you're like us and you play in a band that's three to five members and you need something small that doesn't completely break your bank to be able to use in-ears at your shows or your festivals, this might be exactly what you want to build. I haven't built an in-ear rig in a long time. If this dates it, I was super surprised to see the Studio Live 16R. I had the original Studio Live 16, 2010, like 2012, I can't remember when it came out. There was three rack spaces. So to see it in a one rack space unit, I was very excited about that. And it'll definitely help keep things compact in this 6U rack. Ready to go for today is I've got two Sennheiser G4 boxes. Now we're a five piece band that sometimes plays four piece. We want three in-ear mixes that we're all gonna run in stereo. Drum and bass can share, the two guitars can share, and of course I gotta get my own mix. I have my vocal mic too loud, no one else wants to hear that. So let's take what we've got today, let's start putting it together, and we'll add more as more stuff comes in. If you're trying to figure out how to put together an indie rig on somewhat of a budget, and you've got a band for three to five people, this is what you need. This is the sauce. This is the sauce. Before we start putting stuff in the rack, we gotta get these Sennheiser units rackable. We're gonna have three total, but we're still waiting on one to come in. We're gonna do two like this, which will be the top. And then what we'll do is we'll do one open, and then we've got a Motu interface coming in that's about the same size that we'll use to complete a rack space. And we'll have it mounted on top of the PreSonus. I'll show you when we get there. Sennheiser will be sending all kinds of extra parts, like Ikea, and you just wonder where they're coming from. But at least with Sennheiser, Unlike Ikea, you can figure out that, oh, it's plugs for different countries or this is for a different unit. With Ikea, they just be sending you stuff that they've never even made before. I love to drill everything, literally. Oh, oh. Everything, the whole Tim Allen, do it all, more power. But on stuff like this, you really wanna be delicate and use a hand screwdriver because I don't wanna go track down more of these little tiny screws and if you strip them, and that's just a whole headache you don't want to deal with. So, put the power aside just for a second, just for a second, and hand screw these boogers in. Just take you an extra few seconds. If you ain't got that kind of time, then you shouldn't be putting together one of these anyways. You should hire me to do it. Okay, last screw's in place, so now this is together. So let's put the sides on it. If you've never dealt with these, basically you take these little side screws out, right there, pop the little rack rail thing over it, Pop them back in, easy enough. You know, I got no debate in the Sennheiser versus Shure when it comes to in-ears, but I've got friends that swear by one and swear by the other. If you've already got an in-ear rig, but you're watching this to potentially redo yours or anything like that, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the Sennheisers? Are you looking at those new cheap Sennheisers? They were interesting to me, but we do have a few big festivals coming up this year, like Furnace Fest and uh, like some fairs and stuff that I can't say. Um, so I wanted to make sure we had something really good that would not give me frequency issues because we're not traveling with an RF tech or anything like that. So Nashville, my buddy's an RF tech. I just, if he watches this, Rob, you suck. <laughs> okay, now that this guy's together, let's get the rack out here and start placing some stuff in the rack. So the rack we're using is the SKB Fly series, the iFly series, uh, six unit rack. This whole thing was like 600 bucks. The fact that you can get a fly rack for 600 bucks is crazy to me because the one I have for my guitar rig cost almost double, but SKB didn't make this when I put my Kemper rig together. So this is great. It's sturdy enough. I mean, honestly, really, you just need the frame to be sturdy, but it's sturdy enough, especially in an SKB case. I got no issues traveling or flying with it. So the way I like to put these together, put it down and then I'll start dropping gear into it. We're gonna start from the bottom and go up. So the first thing I'm gonna drop into it is my split snake. All those cables go down in there and that is backwards, but I can fix it on the other side. So we'll just place that in. And then with all this cabling being so much, we're gonna have to kind of run it out and run it to the side and just be careful to not put too, too much pressure on it. But we can't work with all that under there. When I ordered this SKB case, it came with a ton of new screws. Love new rack screws. They're always so nice. Some of you guys are gonna comment and be like, oh, the Seismic Audio stuff sucks. It's not that great. On my last big in-ear rig that I built, I had a custom fan W2, the whole nine yards. It was not 
noticeably different for me to be like, man, if I don't have a custom, if I don't have a custom split, I can't, I can't live. Especially if you're trying to keep this thing on a budget and keep it small, which is what I'm trying to do. The seismic stuff's fine, but there is something you can do to slightly make it a little bit better. Once we get later on, I'll show you. Unfortunately, this seismic thing is kind of warped due to, I don't know, owning it for 10 plus years. And I think I can only get two screws in, but that'll hold, it's no big deal. That does bother my OCD, but it is what it is. All right, the next thing we're putting in is the PreSonus 16R. Like I said, this is the brains of the whole thing and I'm beyond excited that this is a one use system now. This used to be three use and it used to, no matter what, you had six units in any any rack situation. You had three use for your brain, two use for your split snake, and then you had a U for your power supply. The idea that we can put a pretty much a whole rig in six spaces is bananas to me. But then again, I haven't like, put together in any rig since 2018 probably. All right, so now we're gonna leave a blank space because that's where our third in-ear box is gonna go and our Motu is gonna go once we get that in. So everything we've got is pretty much wired up. Let's turn around, take a look at it. Oh yeah. Beautiful little rack here. So like to recap for what we have so far, we've got the split snake, We've got the PreSonus 16R, and we've got the two Sennheiser G4 units. We're missing one G4 unit. I gotta go to Guitar Center, I guess, and get a power supply, and we're missing our Motu. So let's do some YouTube magic to when everything else is here, and we can finish it out and wire it up. All right, the rest of the stuff has come in, so let's talk about what we've got. We've got another Sennheiser unit, so we can finish out the ear side of things, the three units, five packs. And then we've got the Motu MK5 Ultralight. The reason I went with this unit is it has 10 outs uh, I only need six to seven to five, depending on the situation, but it's nice to have that flexibility in most units, especially the half rack units only offer four outs. I love having that extra availability if I need it for anything. The other comparable unit to this is the Play Audio 12. I know a lot of guys love that. I've just used Motu stuff for forever and I love it. I also love that everything about this unit is on the back as far as all the ins, outs that I need. Because of how much we already have going on in the front, I need more stuff in the back. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is this panel right here that I built last night. This is gonna be my back panel. You can really go crazy with this as much as you want. For me, I've built so many racks over time. I've got a lot of random parts sitting around. Like these BNC connectors I already had sitting around. I probably wouldn't have used them if I didn't have them sitting around. But since they're there, might as well put them to use if there is a use for them. You can expand this or shrink this as much as you want. But the few things that I would definitely recommend on having on here is your USBs. You want to be able to make sure you can get to those easily without having a ton of cables just rolled up and put inside the case. And then the power. Having a power con connector versus just a standard IEC cable coming out not only helps to the professional feel and look, I love that look, but it also is just an extra step of things you don't have to deal with inside the rack itself, which keeps all your connections and stuff tight. I'm going to drop maybe a Google spreadsheet or something with links to a lot of this stuff below so you can find it easy. But one thing that I think is kind of a hidden thing that I don't think a lot of people know about is a site called Redco. Redco offers a lot of like pro audio stuff, but what they do is these little label like panel cover things. I absolutely love these things. I'm insanely addicted to them and have tons of them just sitting around my house. Some of these I had to buy new for this project, some I was able to reuse, and they're like a dollar. They're very cheap uh, and worth buying if you're going to do this. Not only does this help keep like a nice clean look, but anyone else using this rack, like if you're going to a festival or something like that, they can look at this, know what's what, and it just helps speed up the process. I think it's just that extra touch to say you care about your rig and you're trying to help whoever the production guy or sound guy or monitor guy is, you're trying to help them move things along and speed things up and not be a pain or somebody that takes a lot of time plugging in their rig. The last thing I need to talk about before I do a montage of me putting most of this together are these right angle XLR adapters. So everything on the front here on this bottom panel and on the PreSonus Studio Live needs to go in at a right angle instead of straight because straight 
which is what these guys are, they will not close. The case will not close. So I'm gonna start wiring some things up and doing some solderings and I'll check back in when there's things I feel like they're important to know. But let's do the montage of soldering now. <laughs> Okay, we're on our last connector of the one side of the snake that we've been working on, or one side of the split that we've been working on. After we get this done, we're gonna take the bulk of the snake here and we'll trim it down a lot. Cause we're gonna feed it in between the Motu and the other G4 unit. We don't really have a ton of space to work with, so we wanna make sure that we're not working with the bulk snake itself, but more the individual cables, so we can kind of get it through there in that tight space. These nutrient connectors are really easy to assemble, but if you're not someone who has ever soldered before or is not comfortable trying to figure it out on the fly or learning off of YouTube, ask around a friend, see if they know. But if you don't have anyone, hit me on Instagram. Um, these are fun to build. I don't mind building more of these. So, you know, hit me on Instagram. I'm happy to help make your little rig or I guess big rig. So after we get this last connector together and test it, then we're going to take out the G4 units that we have had in there um, from earlier, and we're gonna mount the Motu in there using dual lock. If you don't know what dual lock is, then I'm about to literally change your life. Uh, dual lock is concept of Velcro, but you know how Velcro just never seems to hold up when you really need it to, like, especially for you guitar players, you, you know, like, Velcro on your pedal board can be great until it really wears out, but then when it wears out, it's almost pointless. Dual lock is, almost think of it as glue and then like Gorilla Glue. Like dual lock is the type of thing that once you get that set and in there, you gotta go in there with some force to get it off. So with this primarily being a rig that you travel a lot with or even fly with, you want something that's not gonna move around and you know keep all this together especially with all the connections we've soldered and everything else so like i said we've got to cut down the snake part of this and get it down to just the individual cables the seismic snake looks like this on the inside so it's great for that we've got to fit all these through that small gap between the motu and the g4 all right now that that's pulled through on this side we just took the g4 units out so we can install the dual lock and install the motu on this side and the other g4 unit on this side the reason we took those out is just so we can get to things better. This is dual lock if you've never used it before, so you at least know what it looks like. Like I said, I will link all the stuff you really need to build this whole rig in a Google Sheet or something below. But let's measure out here how much dual lock we need. Oh, feet come on this guy when you first get it. Just, they're sticky, just take them right off. But it is gonna help you be able to put this down Take the feet off, it's not a big deal. With dual lock, it's not like Velcro. You don't need a massive strip to go across the whole thing. Just something that does most of it will usually do well. We've got our four strips of dual lock. Before we stick them down though, let's put in the G4 on that side to just see exactly how much space and how much give we have. So for the way this is gonna be set up, we're gonna do kick, snare, tom, tom, bass, and then auxiliary instrument, whether it's of a guitar or a bass, whatever we're gonna be without that show is gonna be in six. And then guitar, guitar. That way we have the option for everyone, but if we're down someone, we've got them covered here. And then nine and 10, we're gonna go loop stereo. We're gonna skip 11, but that's our click. We're gonna do vocal, vocal, vocal. And then 15 and 16, sometimes randomly, I'll play an acoustic. I love the option of us being able to have a talkback mic if we're playing any longer sets or anything like that. But those channels can be open that if we ever decide that you know we need to go a three piece and I need to run something into the front, it's no big deal. While I was looking around, I found this pancake plug that I used from a different build and I'm using that to run into click from the back of the Motu. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run these cables all the way through, finish up this front, get this unit back in, and then we're going to work on the back. Last night, after I cut the cameras, I just went ahead and put this on just temporarily, just to make sure these antennas fit in the case and it would close. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wire up the inner units to the Studio Live. I was lucky enough to have a bunch of cables already pre-made. These are TRS out to XLR in, or they're combo jacks, but I have a bunch of these TRS to XLRs already ready to go and today we're going to clean up a lot of this stuff using electrical tape it's 
the best thing ever for the inside of this thing to make everything look neat. So while the soldering iron is heating up, let's talk a little bit about this back panel and kind of our plans here. So I thought I had enough 440 by 38 screws that connects the panel mount connectors. I was short, but a buddy of mine in town has some, so I'm gonna go grab some from him a little later today. But as you see, I've got some blank spots. Even if I was only like planning to use eight, I would go ahead and buy the 12. And if I was planning to use 12, I would go ahead and buy the 16 version, just because you never know how this rig could change in the future and how you wanna plug other rigs into it. So what's gonna happen with this rig right now is we've got the power, the three antennas, the motor USB, and then the studio live USB. I'm gonna make all these blank. I've got blank covers for these. And then I'm gonna do a talk back in right there. All right, I've done a good amount here and I figured you didn't wanna just see me solder for hours and hours on end. So we're skipping ahead a little bit. Uh, all of the G4 units are wired in, soldered up, electrical taped up. I went ahead and plugged in 13, 14, 15 here. We're leaving 16 open because we're gonna do that talk back. I also cut down the snake itself coming from that the side that we've been using here just so we can run these cables if you can see real deep in there just trying to keep everything as clean as possible because we still got to run power we've still got to run some usb cables but other than that we're pretty much done so let's plug in the last handful of cables before we have to solder this all right so we're pretty close to being done all of the xlrs here on the back are done this talkback channel is wired in i spaced out these antennas because I went and got a few of the 440 screws from my friend Rob, he is a RF tech, and we were talking about how the antennas were before, and he told me basically they were making one giant antenna being so close together, and would potentially cause like bleed in the frequencies. If the frequencies are too close together on the IEM units, you know, if you're going up one scan above, with the antennas being so close, it could cause an issue. So the last thing here is wiring up this IEC cable for the Personas unit. Unfortunately, I thought I bought the right um, Edison adapter to swap this out so I can make this cable shorter. I didn't, but I'm currently out of time because I've got to use this this weekend. So we're going to use a normal IEC cable, do our best to conceal it in here, and I'm probably going to wind up switching this out next week or so. Other than that, it's pretty much done. So I hope you learned a lot. I relearned some things. Um, building stuff like this is really fun if you want to learn how to solder. But if you don't want to learn to solder yourself and wire all this stuff up, DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to do stuff like this from time to time. Uh, I love building these racks. And if you guys liked this, I wouldn't mind rewiring my Kemper rack. It needs a little love. So comment below and maybe I'll do another one of these. But now let's roll the B-roll of this thing all put together. Yeah.